Hey everybody, and yes, I'm back from the video. Now today I'm going to be reading my coming out story. Um, I'm finally getting around to do it. Um, now the reason I'm doing it is because the first one I did, I kind of left a lot of stuff out that I wish I didn't. And also since then, more has happened, like I've come out to more people. So I'm sorry if I kind of repeat things that you do already know, but just kind of bear with it, but you know, because there are things here you won't know. And... Yeah, I was gonna get started. Now, all of my life, basically, I've always known that I was gay. Like, ever since I was a little kid, I've always known that I was more kind of effeminate than a guy, really. Um, I always remember as a little child, um, always wanted to dress up as the Spice Girls, and, like, we'd have these karaoke nights when I was a little kid, and be like, I wanna be Sporty Spice, and all this kind of stuff, and I've, I was always a very gay child. My sister told me that apparently my mum went up to her when I was, like, four years old and said to her that she thought I was gonna be gay. Now, the first person I told, I was actually only, like, 10 years old. Now I know it's gonna become like a really big shock to a lot of you to think that I knew when I was that young, but you know, I knew what I was. And being 10 years old, I was kind of like naive to think of like the, the hatred towards gay people. So me telling my sister, that was not really a big deal because like I had no idea what it really sort of entailed all of it. I knew that it just meant I like guys. Now how it happened is I remember um we were on holiday in France and I said to my sister, can I just talk to you? Um, so we went upstairs and I started sort of like just talking to her and I just said to her, I was like, I'm gay. And it was kind of nice having my sister know from such a young age because I remember going to her when I was in like other, like, oh, when I was going through school and stuff and saying like how there was this guy I liked and all this kind of thing. And it was nice to have someone who knew before all the bullying and all that kind of started, before I started becoming a bit funny about it because there was always one part of me that knew someone didn't care and that was the good thing. Obviously when the bullying started in school quite early on, like, it didn't really offend me too much because it was just words, like I said before. Um, but when obviously the physical stuff started happening when it came to like year 8 and year 9, that's when I started to get to the stage where I was thinking to myself, I actually don't want to be gay. Like my school life was horrible, I remember always like being scared about going to lessons and stuff, and always sort of walking around thinking when am I going to get hit for being gay and all this kind of stuff. So I used to like hide it quite a lot. I remember always having like, I always used to have girlfriends quite a lot in school, and I never knew how I used to get girlfriends really, like, I don't understand what, what a girl would see in me really, because I was, I was obviously gay, I mean like, I was obviously gay. I was, I was trying to force myself to be straight really, I was kind of thinking to myself that if I just kept at it, you know, eventually I might just become straight and I could like, find girls attractive, um, <laughs> trust me it didn't work. Although, it's funny saying that, a girl I went out with is actually a lesbian now, so like, Maybe she was doing the same thing. So now, I was, my final girlfriend, I went out with her, she was called Rachel. Um, I went out with her for quite a while, and I hadn't been with a guy for such a long time, before then anyway. So I kind of forgot what it was like anyway, but like, the thoughts were always there. But because I've been with a girl for so long, I kind of forgot what it was like to be with a guy. So, me and my friend, me and Rachel, and my friend, and um, his girlfriend, used to go out, like, the four of us used to hang out quite a lot. So we went over to my friend's house, and um, we were playing like dares, so we were having like a drinking party. So Rachel, my other friend, dared me and the guy to kiss. Obviously, we were like, yeah, whatever. So we kissed and stuff, and as soon as I kissed him, I was like, oh my god, this feels just so right. It just feels so like, oh my god, what have you been doing to yourself? And then like, it was, it was just amazing after so long, like, getting with a girl, and then thinking, and then, and then getting with a guy after like, you know, after such a long time. It was like, a, such a wake up call, it was like, oh my god, like, it just felt like so weird inside, like, it just feels right. Since then, I was like, okay, Roland, do you really want this for yourself? Do you really want to spend your entire life lying to yourself, being unhappy. So naturally after breaking up with Rachel, I kind of started to try to accept it a bit more, um, because I knew that it was right really, I couldn't just keep doing this to myself. So it's about maybe six months later before I told anyone, and I told Rachel, because we, we, kind of, we kind of knew really, like, one of the reasons why we broke up, and we, we were always stayed a bit close after that. So we were over at my friend Daniel's house, and, um, we were sitting on his bed, and I was just talking to her, and she said to me, she goes, Roland, are you gay? And I was like, yes, and I kind of said it just sort of, like, without thinking, I went, yes, like that, I just looked at her, and I went, Shit, I just actually said yes. And then all of a sudden I had this like big sort of like, oh my god feeling in my stomach. I was like, I actually just said it. I actually just did it. And she was like, Roland, I've always known it's okay, it's fine, all this kind of stuff. And we I was like, oh my god, she doesn't give a shit. And I was like, it was just amazing. And like I had a bit I was honestly, I was on a high for such a long time. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. But like I was still a bit cautious about people who knew, but like it was just nice to know that I've told someone already. Um so the next person I told was my friend Rebecca, who um funny enough, she was one of my girlfriends I had in school as well. Um, and it was 2007, and me, Daniel, and Rebecca were having like just a little party here at my house, and we were just drinking and stuff. I started to get upset, and I started to get a bit kind of like teary and stuff, and she was asking me what it was and stuff. And I was like, you know, I've been hiding something for a long time, and I just told her that I was gay. And at first, she, I don't think she actually believed me at first, I think she was like, oh, don't worry, Raylan, blah, blah, blah. And I, I think she took it as a joke, but I was actually being serious, and then eventually I explained to her that no, it was serious. 
But um, obviously she was fine with it and now Becca's obviously one of my best friends. So like, I love you Becca! Now since that day, there was a bit when it kind of went a bit shit because I found some stuff out. Now, my friend Maxine came into school and she said, Roland, can I just have a word with you? And I went out, I went outside. She was like, Roland, I know. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, Roland, I know you're gay. And I was like, how do you know that? And she goes, and she went, oh, Rachel told me the other day. Oh, and I was, I just, I, I just stopped and I was like, she, what? What? Like, I was so taken back by that. I mean, that, that, you do, like, that hurt my feelings so much that someone who I really trusted, like, the first person I properly told and the person I thought was, like, a really good friend to me could just, just gossip about me like that and just help use that against me and just be like, you know, Roland Gay and just tell someone with no consideration about what it could do. And then the worst thing about it, I found out two weeks later, I think about two weeks later it was, that she went and told another one of my close friends and I was like, out of my life, out of my life. Because I wasn't ready for everybody to know yet, I was only ready for certain people to know, and then all of a sudden these other people knew and I didn't want them to know yet because I wasn't ready to tell them. I kind of got put into a bit of an insecure place because I was a bit worried about it, because obviously I wasn't comfortable with all these people suddenly knowing, because I only became comfortable with it myself a few sort of months late earlier. So a long time went past really and um, I did end up telling everyone, all, my, all the rest of my friends and um, obviously it all went nicely, everything was fine, all my friends were okay with it. Um, there, was a, there was a few of them who were a bit iffy about it and I don't speak to them now anyway. And yeah, so like my friends were really, really supportive and I don't know what I would have done without them really. Like they were so, they were so supportive over me and you know, I love you all and you know, you've done so much for me and just like it made me feel comfortable and made me feel sort of safe in your environment. So I definitely came to all, I definitely came to all my friends first for any of my family. Um, just because obviously then, like I knew, I don't, I, there was never, I never really thought of myself that my family were gonna reject me or like, you know, do anything like that. Because obviously I'm so flamboyant. I mean like seriously, if any of my family didn't know, it's kind of a shock anyway. So like, they all, ever, all of them would have got used to it already. When I came around to telling my auntie, um, she comes out, my auntie comes down every single Saturday and um, we hang out all the time. Hi Annette! I remember we were, sitting in the, we were sitting in the kitchen. I can't even remember how this conversation came up. And we were just sitting and we were talking about stuff. And then it just came out as, um, I talked about a guy or something, and she was like, oh, so you are gay then? And I was like, yes, I am. And that was it, basically, like, <laughs> that was quite easy. And um, I was a bit worried about telling my brother. I don't really know why I was, really. Um, but I got my auntie to do it for me, and um, it was one time we had a family thing here. My auntie drove home with to, take, to take my brother home. And um, she was like, Jason, blah, 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 Roland's gay. He was a bit worried about telling you all this kind of stuff. Then my brother rung me, like, um, a few hours later, and was like, you know, Anna told me, it's okay, I don't care. So, you know, that was awesome. And then, um, recently, I've actually only just come up to my granddad about maybe a couple months ago. Um, it was a bit difficult, really, because he's obviously two generations before me. It was, obviously, you got him when he was young, it was illegal, it was still classified as a mental illness, all this kind of stuff. So, whenever I'd have, like, a girl over or something, he would instantly think there was something going on between us. And he would, like, oh, so, when are you going to get married to her and all this kind of thing? When are you going to, when are you going to have kids? And when you have kids, like, all this kind of stuff. It was constant. And it got to a stage where I was getting really annoyed with it. But I was too scared to come out to him. I, d I was just, I just couldn't do it. So my auntie was, like, I can't, I can't, my auntie just told me that she was in, like, the conservatory or something with my granddad. And, um, they were saying something about my friend Hannah. And um, he was asking me like, oh, why aren't they getting together and all this kind of stuff. And my auntie was just like, Roland's not interested in girls. And like, <laughs> when my auntie told me that, I was like, oh my God, it's just, it's actually happened. But like, um, I'm really happy that it did. But then I kind of officially came up to my granddad about a month ago. Um, he had his brother over here and um, they were in the living room and I was on my phone to one of my friends. My granddad's brother was like, oh, so who are you talking to? I was like, just a friend. And um, he was like, is it a girl? And I was like, no. And he goes, oh, well, it's not a guy, is it? And I was like, yes. And he goes, oh, you're not one of them, are you? And I was like, well, actually, yes, I am one of them. And we ended up having a big like a big argument because he, is, he isn't the most gay-friendly person. And like, I was not letting him talk. Like, he was talking to me like I was a piece of shit. And I was like, bitch, I'm not letting you talk to me like this, blah, blah, blah. So I was going on about all these rights and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, I am gay and I am proud. And obviously that was right in front of my granddad. So like, like, that was kind of like my coming out with my granddad, really. I kind of did it in an argument with someone else. So, like, you can come out on an argument. You really can. Like, I never thought you could, but you can come out on an argument. So, it kind of happened like that. But no, he's alright with it. And my aunt said he's fine with it, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah. So, it is nice to know that I am officially out to everybody that I know. Um, it's, it's a really, it really is a really nice feeling. Um, and to everyone who's not out, you know... You'll do it eventually, don't worry. You'll know the time when you're ready for it. And, you know, it'll be amazing. Like, you don't realise, when you tell someone, you get such a high. Like, from the very first person you tell, even though mine was a bit of shit afterwards, like, you get such an amazing feeling. Like, you're like, oh my god, I've actually done it. I've waited so long to do this, and I've actually done it. And when you're completely out, and you think, 
oh my god, I can be myself and no one cares. Like, it's just, it's just such an amazing feeling. Like, seriously, you, it's just amazing. I wear my pride. I mean, I like, I've got a big rainbow flag there. Obviously, I can't hang it up anywhere properly, so I kind of have to hang it on that hook. But, you know, yeah, I, I'm a very proud gay man. So, yeah, I'm going to go now. Um, I hope the video hasn't gone on for too long, because, like, I don't fucking shut up. I'll just keep going on and on and on. Ungasha!